Angela Wolf here. Today I wanna to talk about making a really fun top. The key here is the gorgeous fabric. This could be a bathing suit cover up, you could make it any length. And I actually chopped mine off so I could use them as tops and I'll wear tank tops with skinny jeans. So let me show you what I chose here. The key is to find a good pattern and you could alter any pattern to work for this. There's just a couple things you need to keep in mind. I started with my sheath dress of all things. I cut it off so it looks like a knit top. This is the back and the front. Now, you really cannot have darts in this fabric. I'll explain why later, but it's probably pretty obvious. You're gonna see every seam through this fabric. So I chose this dress and all I did, just gonna show you real quick, I'm gonna slide up the dart for the size that I cut out and slide in the dart this way. And I'm going right to the tip here without cutting through. This is called slash and spread in case you haven't seen me do that before. And I'm just gonna open this dart until this point of the dart meets this point. And I have just moved my bust dart into the body of the garment. Let me go back here and show you. So instead of having a bust dart here, which look at how nicely it fits here, I've got a nice flowy top that I can actually pull over my head. That's the key. So you're gonna do the same thing with the front and the back. No matter what pattern you have, that's how you take care of that area, but make sure that you don't have darts or zippers or anything crazy like that. Let's take a better look at this fabric. This white one is very crazy. It's almost like fringe. And notice when I cut through certain areas, I actually have pieces that are just laying free here. That is fringe. It's very difficult to get into a seam, but I'm gonna give you some tips for that. The green one is a little bit easier to sew. You can see that doesn't fray either. And I just cut across and I'll line that up and sew through it. So that's the basis of the fabric. Let's go back to these for one minute. Notice how the hems, I've let them go free because they don't fray. So how easy is that? So the key is to take care of the neckline. And here I've used stretch elastic. That actually stretches, see this? And here I've used bias tape. I've hand dyed this fabric to match, and this is bias tape. So you have either option. I chose to cover the neckline, and I also chose to do the area through the sleeve because that seam really did not look very good. On the side seam here, I surged that. You can't see it anyways, it's under your arm. So I really focused on those two seams, and let me show you what I used. So here is the bias tape that I mentioned. This is just silk charmeuse. I hand dyed it to match the fabric. You don't have to get that technical. If you wanna just go by two inch wide bias trim, that's fine too. And here I've already pressed it in half. And so I sewed that to the neckline and I sewed it to the armhole. The one thing to keep in mind with the bias tape is when you attach it, you just wanna make sure that you stitch, because I'm gonna show you how to do it on something else. You're gonna stitch right down the center between the fold and the edge. And then when this all folds in, you basically end up with bias tape folded over the edge, just like that. But I'm gonna show you something more fun. And this is so easy to use, you're gonna love it. Stretch elastic. And you're probably thinking, that's a woven fabric. Why on earth would you use stretch elastic? Well, it works just like bias tape. And I can use it to my benefit. There's one area of the neckline that's curved. And I'm gonna show you how to do that piece. And all I'll do is stretch this just slightly when I go through the neckline and that helps to keep the neckline from billowing out. A little trick there. So the stretch elastic comes in different widths. I chose one that's a little bit wider and you don't even need to use pins. It just literally just folds in half and we're gonna stitch along. A couple more things about this fabric. You're gonna notice here that pins do not work very well because as soon as you start stretching, they'll fall out. Instead, I use clips. So when I'm working with seams that I have to mark, I'll use clips to hold the fabric together. Just like that, very simple. And for cutting, I use real sharp scissors or the rotary cutter. And all you do is just cut across and slide, just like that. Now, this is the part I wanted to mention. See these little areas here? Well, if you're trying to sew a seam together and you've got all these little things flying out, you have a few options. You could use stabilizer, tear away sticky back stabilizer and cut it in short strips, attach this onto it. That's too much work. I'll show you an easier way. 
Here are two finished samples. This one is surged. You can't really see it. That's the wrong side of the fabric. That's the right side. So it doesn't look bad. In fact, if you bought this in ready to wear, it would probably be surged. But doesn't this look so much more fun? This is the right side, and that's the wrong side. So let's go over here, and I'm going to show you how to sew in this elastic. So here is two pieces of my fabric. And I'm just going to lay these on top of each other. So this would be the shoulder seam or the side seam, something that's straight. And I'm going to set to a straight stitch at 3.0 length. You want to have a length that's at least 3.0 because there's, it's, with the stretchy elastic, it's too short if it's smaller than that. Now watch what I'm doing here. All I do is line up the fabric inside here and I'm eyeballing that the edge of the fabric will line up with the fold in the elastic. Can you see that fold okay? I'm using a contrasting thread so you can see what's going on here. And because we know it's folded in half, you can just line up your needle right on the edge, not too close to the edge, but mm, one eighth or two eighths of an inch in, you're good. And just stitch. Notice I'm holding the elastic, I'm not stretching. Let me show you one second if you stretch. Okay, this is what you do not want to do. Look at the back side. See how it's all bunched? That's what you do not want to do. So I'm just going to stick a pin there so you know from where the bad stuff was when we take this out of the machine. Instead, let the machine do its work, fold the fabric in, and stitch. Fold the fabric in, and stitch. I think you get the idea, because I want to show you how to do a curve. So this would be your shoulder seam or side seam, but this is that area that I stretched. That looks terrible, unless that's what you're going for. That's called gathering. But this is what it should look like. And then all I did was I opened up my seam. I'm going to say that's our seam right here, and folded this to one side or the other. And I just ran one more stitch down the edge securing it in place. I guess it would help if I put the presser foot down. And I'm just stitching again. I'm just going to go a little ways here in the good area. All right. So that's how I did the shoulder seam. And you can see how nicely that lays. And on the back side, it's just covering up the edge of the fabric. One thing I didn't mention is when you're sewing your seams together, when you're going to use this technique, you will sew your seam to the outside of the garment. So wrong sides together. All right, what about the neckline? I told you that we don't stretch except in certain areas. So let's just say this is the neckline. You only have one layer of fabric. Now if I were to stretch this fabric, can you see what's happening here? It's stretching the opposite way of what I just showed you. So instead, I'm going to fold in the elastic here. And I'm going to start a stitch. So just pretend that this is the area on your neck, maybe from your shoulder to here. That's where you do not want to ease anything. You just sew it just like we just did. But it's the bottom curve that we don't want to billow out. And here's the trick here. I know you've seen me do this before with bias tape, but it's even easier here. So from here to here is where we want to ease it. Because if we stretch it out, see how that stretches? That's kind of on a curve. So instead, lay the fabric nicely, as nice as you can. It's kind of messy. Take the elastic and just stretch just a little bit. Just a little bit. And just a little bit. And I'm going to show you how this looks and give you one more idea for humming. So you notice how this takes that curve nicely. It's not stretched out, but I could stretch it. But it holds that in for your neckline. And one last tip here. This is a lot of information for one little cute top. Notice on this fabric how there's areas, like if I go like that, how I cut off that fringe. You could technically go through here and give yourself a scalloped, odd looking hem. See how cool that looks? What I'm doing is just following these lines in here of the woven. One more idea for that. So that's how simple it is to make one of these tops. Again, pick an easy pattern, 
Choose a way to finish your neckline and your armholes. If you're afraid of the armholes, make a tank. Leave the sleeves off. Very fun to do. Be sure to check out the website for tips on this fabric.